Hey, what's up guys? Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center again today, and we're going to talk about what do you do if you find a baby turtle. Now we're coming into the season, like for this little guy right here, this little Eastern, baby Eastern box turtle. Okay. We're coming into the end of the season where they're starting to hatch. Most of our baby turtles are hatching out uh, from eastern box turtles to painted snapping turtles, things like that, anywhere from about August all the way up through early October. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a minute, but just before we get into that, right here in this corner is our subscriber button. Make sure you hit that. We appreciate you doing that. And for those that are already subscribed and following along, we appreciate you following along week after week after week. If you're on your cell phone, just widen that up to the full screen and it will be right there in the corner. Now, let's talk about this. You find you're digging around maybe in your garden, uh, your dog dug up in the backyard. Uh, a lot of the times we'll take phone calls and these little guys end up being found. A box turtle later nest uh, of eggs in your garden at some point in time throughout the early or late spring, early summer. These guys usually incubate for anywhere from about 80 to 110 days, depending on the temperature, depending on where they're at. Uh, they can incubate anywhere from essentially two and a half to about three and a half months. And when they hatch, not always do they immediately come out of the nest. Okay, so one of the things that we have happen. One of the things that we have happen is, especially in gardens, because box turtles will go into somebody's garden, uh, natural area, and find that an absolutely wonderful place to lay her eggs. Snapping turtles will too, aquatic turtles will, your painted, your yellow bellies, your river cooters, Florida cooters, uh, mud turtles, musk turtles. They'll go in places that's kind of inconvenient for us, but really convenient or what they feel is a great place for their babies to be laid to come out for the safest amount of time. Now, when you find these guys, a lot of people will find them digging through their gardens, they're gardening and they'll, they'll come across a nest or they come across a baby when they're mowing or weed eating, whatever the case may be. So what are some things that you can do with these turtles or how do you deal with the baby that you have found? Well, of course, the first answer is when a lot of people call us, oh, well, do we need to release it because it could get eaten? Well, guess what? That's nature. Okay. I mean, well, yeah, unfortunately, that's part of nature. Yes. Anything out in the wild can be eaten by something else, predated upon it by something else. However, in the case of like box turtles, baby box turtles, they don't establish a territory right directly out of the gate. So you can take them if it's inside of your yard, there's dogs, there's other, uh, other animals that you have that may, cats as well, uh, that may prey on them or end up hurting them. You could take them out in the wild somewhere out in uh, the midst of heavy farmland. You could take them way out in the woods. You could take them way out in places like that, anywhere where there's going to be a lot of fallen trees and there's going to be water access because that will be bugs for food. They'll be able to forage on plant life and they'll have hydration. So these guys will do just fine in areas like that. But let's say it's in a real heavy neighborhood area or it's in a heavy area where you just don't feel like it's safe. Keeping these guys in captivity is certainly not suggested. They, they do settle into captivity fairly well, but keeping them in even temporarily, not necessarily suggested. Find a rehabber, find a zoo, a science center, somebody that can take them in that can deal with them. Okay, but let's say you take it in. You don't have anybody that's close to you or nobody takes it in. You're trying to keep it safe. Well, the key thing with these guys is they, they get very dehydrated very, very quickly. So they have to have water access uh, at least once or twice a day, physically put into a really small amount of water, water dishes that are really low that they can't flip themselves over in, they can't drown in, they can climb out of very easily, but they do dehydrate very, very quickly. So a lot of the times we'll keep a water source readily available for them. And if we don't see them go into the water source, then we put them in a water source at least once a day, sometimes twice a day to make sure they stay hydrated. Now, these babies are incredibly attracted to movement. Uh, they love hunting. Uh, the younger they are and up until they're a sub-adult, when they're starting to eat more of the foliage, they are incredibly attracted to movement. Hence why a lot of the times when it rains or right after it rains, you see them a lot more because worms, and bugs and slugs and snails and all kinds of things come out of the ground after a heavy rain and that's like a mobile buffet for them. Um, it's just a complete buffet line, a smorgasbord of food that comes out of the ground. So that's 
what they're after. And it's easier for them to be able to uh, gut load, essentially, uh, gut load on food after it's rained because there's a lot more availability of food. Now, feeding them, you can feed them things such as the small earthworms, you can do snails, slugs, you can do mealworms, uh, you can do small dubia roaches. They will eat things like uh, dead animal matter. So they are a help in the environment because they will also forage on uh, dead animals as long as it's not too decomposed. So things like meat products, uh, fish, uh, turkey, chicken, ground beef, things like that also works well for them. But again, remember these light guys being, especially being little ones, they're more strongly attracted to the movement than they are anything else. So anything that's going to move is going to have their attention instantly, uh, especially things like earthworms and the way in which they move. You touch an earthworm and it starts flailing around. Oh, that's definitely got the baby's attention. But again, this is about what do we do if we find one? Well, the, tip, the typical response uh, that most of your rehabbers, most of your zoos and science centers is going to give you is if it's an aquatic turtle, take it to a water source uh, and let it go. If it's a baby box turtle, you're going to take it somewhere where there's a lot of wooded leafy area uh, with a lot of fallen uh, tree materials and things like that. Places where there's going to be rotten wood because rotten wood and rotten wood is going to have a lot of your pill bugs, um, your isopods. You're just going to have a lot of your worms. It's going to have a lot of your slugs and snails and things like that around it. So it makes a great place for them to be able to eat. Also with rotten wood is going to come the mushrooms. These guys these guys, the eastern box turtles, can actually eat mushrooms. It's poisonous to you and I. So they'll have that plant life to be able to forage on when they're inside of nature. Now, these guys don't set up an established territory till they're much older. So yes, the old rule of thumb, if you take an adult out of its territory and you put it somewhere else, it's going to try and go back. That is a correct thing. But as babies, when they first come out, they haven't set up an established territory. So you could take them anywhere that's going to be more conducive for their species to be able to survive long term. Okay. Now, this is kind of a brief overview brief overview of things about to do with baby turtles when you find them. And it does happen quite often. We take quite a few calls. I found baby turtles in the wild. Also understand that sometimes in the springtime, if you find a baby turtle, typically speaking, if they're what we call a late season hatcher, they're not going to come out of the nest. They'll just stay in the nest over winter time and just come out in the springtime. So if you find them in the spring, good chances they come out of the nest uh, in early spring, which means they were a late season hatcher. They hatched in, they hatched in uh, probably October sometime, mid to late October. And the fact that the temperatures were already starting to cool down, they went ahead and just stayed in the nest for the winter time. Now, we appreciate you coming along with us. We appreciate you joining up with us. And this little baby eastern box turtle here, absolutely love these things. These are absolutely amazing, amazing creatures, and they do a fantastic, fantastic job of a lot of things in the wild by spreading seeds and growing new plant life to helping clean up uh, meat matter uh, to keeping bugs in check. We'll, we appreciate you coming along with us. This is Chad again here at the, the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center. We are the Reptile Rangers. We appreciate you following along. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button, the bell for notification. Make sure to write in, you leave comments. Make sure to uh, let us know of other things you want us to film about. And if you need anything, our, our information will be in the description below for those that need anything to get in touch with us. Uh, so again, we appreciate you coming along with us week after week after week. We'll either see you here at the zoo or we'll see you on the next episode. Later.